Coming up on Cronkite News, the House holds a special session on funding to fight wildfires. And later, today is the start of the monsoon season. We tell you what to expect this year. And later on Break It Down, the underrepresentation of women of color in the music industry. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Sinead Hickey. And I'm Peyton Watts. Thank you for joining us. Governor Doug Ducey announced an executive order today saying schools cannot require students to take the COVID-19 vaccine or submit COVID vaccine documents. The order also would block schools from mandating COVID tests and mask orders. The order does not block schools from offering tests and voluntary mask usage. Governor Ducey will be working with legislators to make the order law. The state legislature is back in special session to discuss wildfires and what the state can do to help during what could be a, f a tough few months for fire control. There are over a dozen fires burning throughout Arizona right now. And as the temperatures rise and conditions get more dangerous, these fires need more personnel and resources. Ducey called for the special session last week, and yesterday he met with legislative leaders to discuss how much funding is needed. The special session is being held in hopes to get more money to support first responders and communities in need. Especially with this last weather pattern that the state is in, and we have other fires now emerging in other parts of the state, um, some very even close to the valley. Ducey hopes they will approve around $100 million in funding for wildfire relief. A portion of the money would go to reducing wildfire risks, people affected by the fires and the aftermath of it all. Today marks the first day of the monsoon in Arizona. So what do we have in store this summer? Will it be hot and dry or can we look forward to some humidity and moisture? While most newcomers assume that monsoon season means rain every day, an ASU climatologist says that is not how it works. Instead, it comes in waves with a day or two of storm before going quiet again. The past few monsoons have been fairly dry historically. However, ASU climatologist Randy Cervini predicts this summer will be different. I'm actually anticipating a fairly typical monsoon. I think it will get started somewhere around the first week of July. We'll have some thunderstorms. Not everybody in the valley is going to get dumped on by thunderstorms, uh, but we will have hopefully a better uh, rainfall total at the end of uh, September than what we had last year. Last year's monsoon was the driest on record with an average of only 1.5 inches of rain across the state. And I'm sure many are waiting on any sign of rain to help cool us off with these intense temperatures we've had this past week. Let's head to Isabella Fredrickson in the Weather Center to see what those temperatures are going to look like. Hi. As you can see, it's going to be hot all across the country. Over in the East Coast, it's going to be high 70s to mid 80s. And over in the West Coast, we're also going to have lower 70s to mid 80s. Looking at our highs for the state of Arizona, as you can see, it's very hot. If you're looking for slight relief, I'd head up to the Grand Canyon where it's only 96 degrees, but anywhere else south is going to be a lot hotter. It's going to be 116 in Phoenix today and 113 in Tucson. Looking at our evening planner, it's going to be in the triple digits all throughout the evening. However, you will find some relief starting at 6 with some clouds. Looking at our eight-day forecast, it's heating up even more, and by Thursday, it's going to be 118 degrees. It's also going to stay 118 de degrees through Friday. However, you'll find some slight relief by Wednesday at 109. So if you have some plans, I would lather on the sunscreen, reapply, stay hydrated, and also seek some shade. Isabella Fredrickson in the Weather Center. A Senate official says the hand count of 2.1 million ballots in Maricopa County is finished. All that remains to be counted are duplicated overseas and Braille ballots. Since the re recount began on April 23rd, it has received criticism from both sides. The end of the recount doesn't mean there will be a final result released soon. And some say the process was fueled by conspiracies as they are evaluating the authenticity of the paper ballots. Senate liaison Ken Bennett describes the process. One uh, microscope is uh, trained on the oval of the president race, 
and there's lights from the side so that you can see that there's an, that it's filled in by a handwritten or a handheld uh, writing device. It can even sense the that there's indentation in the paper. And then there's a couple that are looking at paper fibers. So it's everything in general related to the authenticity of, of the paper. The audit got national attention as lawmakers from a dozen states like Pennsylvania and Wisconsin came to see the process while they consider conducting election audits. Coming up after the break, a flight with more than a million doses of COVID-19 vaccines lands in Mexico. The effects the donated vaccines will have on the country. And later, the Glendale UFC fight brought in visitors from across the country. We'll see how that gave a boost to the local economy. Cronkite News provides students at ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism with the opportunity to gain real-world experience in the newsroom. At Cronkite News, our students produce professional content for audiences by taking on all roles, whether they be reporting, anchoring, producing, or studio production. Each department gives students first-hand professional newsroom experience. For more information, visit cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Ready to watch the best of PBS anytime, anywhere, on nearly any device? It's easy with the free PBS Video app. Simply download the PBS Video app on your mobile or streaming device. Now you can watch the latest PBS episodes or catch up on the shows you missed, discover new favorites from PBS, and local content from your PBS station. go by top whoa as artists we conduct our educations in public you can never know whether it's going to be a success one just has to risk it it's you and the work and the place it's a very particular relationship here's our lens tell us what you think friday night at nine on arizona pbs the Biden administration donated 1.35 million Johnson & Johnson vaccine doses to the Mexico border this morning. The U.S. delivered the single-dose vaccine in efforts to boost vaccination rates in Mexico. Anyone 18 or older can get vaccinated in one of four cities along the southern U.S. and Mexico borders, including Tijuana, Mexicali, Ciudad Juarez, and Reynosa. The Consulate of Mexico in Phoenix says Mexico's target population for vaccines is younger. Between Arizona and Sonora, we have a lot of family and cultural ties. And these are the part of the population uh, between 18 and 49 uh, years old, the ones who are more active in, in, in crossing and going back and forth uh, to the states in Mexico. According to the Our World and Data organization, about 12% of Mexico's population is fully vaccinated against COVID-19, which is about 11 million people, compared to the U.S. with more than 144 million people fully vaccinated. UFC 263 was in Glendale this past weekend, giving a needed boost to the local economy. More than 17,000 fans came to see the Ultimate Fighting Championship, which meant bars, restaurants, and hotels near the event were hopping. Cronkite News reporter Osama Awadallah was there and brings us the excitement. I'm over at Twin Peaks Restaurant in Glendale, Arizona, where fans have lined up outside to meet former UFC interim lightweight champion Justin Gaethje and to try Dana White's new alcoholic beverage, Howler Head. The outpour of the crowd, the fans, I mean, it's just, as you can see, it's bananas in here. It's so much fun. There's standing room only, crowds, money's being made. I mean, and we're the perfect sports venue to host an event like this. I mean, it's really just terrific. And the economic impact that we're having, I mean, it's just outweighs it, especially coming off the pandemic. It's great for Valley businesses, especially here in Glendale. Uh, we couldn't be more excited. UFC 263 did not just attract the business of the local Arizonans. People from all over the United States flew in to witness this event. 
we flew out from Minneapolis to come down here because uh, it's a really, really stacked card. A um, couple of our favorite fighters were on there, like Nate Diaz, Israel Adesanya, and uh, we really felt like it was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to come out here. So it's like a bucket list item that we got to check off to come out here to this big event. I came from the Navajo Reservation in northern Arizona. I first met him at the weigh-ins. He was there. So I got a selfie with him, and then I met him here again and just asked how I was doing today and got a quick picture and got an autograph photo of him as well. Justin Gaethje went the extra mile to make the day of this young cancer survivor. Uh, Morgan here is wearing his one of his older shirts here. It says, face your fears. Uh, I had one of my friends in um, Colorado, his name's Travis, get this thing signed for her. And uh, it says on here, get well soon. She was going through a uh, bone marrow transplant at the time. So he wrote a nice little note to her there. Uh, because she was rocking the shirt, he gave her a uh, boom box here uh, as a special gift for one of his little giveaways. We're just lifelong fans. We got to come and see him and support him and wanted to thank him. Thank you, Justin Gaethje. In Phoenix, Osama Awadala, Cronkite News. And while we don't yet know how much money the Glendale fight brought in, a fight in Las, in Las Vegas in January of 2019, before the pandemic, brought in an estimated $86 million to the local economy, according to the UFC. I'm Emily Carmen. Coming up after the break, I'll have your Cronkite Sports Report. We'll show you how one Phoenix police officer is working to change the narrative on law enforcement within the community. Don't go away. Every day I wake up, my first thought is how can I serve this community? Go, be blocked. The biggest Woo! hurdle was not taking PTSD personally. Would you welcome, please, the amazing. Everybody that watches this, they say that I'm the greatest that they've ever seen. It's prime time on your time. Watch Prime Afternoons every weekday on Arizona PBS. Did you miss a show in the evening? Then catch up on Prime Afternoons. Your favorite dramas. No more bloody heroics. Antiques Roadshow. Really? <laughs> Nature and Nova. It's time to reintroduce some wonder into this miracle of nature. All of the best from PBS on Prime Afternoons. Weekdays starting at 1.30, only on Arizona PBS. Take a journey with Arizona PBS. Join us every Sunday afternoon for Destination Drama. Watch all your favorite PBS dramas, like Grand Chester. I'm William Davenport, new vicar of Grand Chester. Paul Dark. Nothing in my life is meaning without you. And Victoria. I know that I'm young, but I know my duty. And if you missed a recent primetime drama, we'll help you catch up on those, too. Destination Drama, every Sunday afternoon at 1, only on Arizona PBS. Cronkite News is more than your local news station. Through our innovative ideas, we create new ways to connect with our viewers and have their stories be heard. Our cutting-edge technology allows us to take a deeper dive into seeking the truth and delivering new perspectives. Stay up to date on top Arizona stories anytime on TikTok, Twitter, and Facebook at Cronkite News. Welcome back to Cronkite News. I'm Emily Carmen. This is your Cronkite Sports Report. After the death of George Floyd, thousands of athletes took a stand to raise awareness about the way people of color are treated by police. Cronkite News reporter Aaron Slindy tells us how police officers coaching youth sports may heal some of the negative feelings about deputies in America. It's not every day that a person has an encounter with a police officer. But the girls on Ignite Volleyball Club's 14 elite team spend a lot of quality time with Phoenix police officer Matt McKinster every week. I really care about building these kids into positive role models in the future, uh, teaching them life lessons that I hope they'll take with me long past volleyball. 
McKinster has been coaching club volleyball for seven years after his own daughter started playing. McKinster spends his time coaching young volleyball players when he is not on patrol. On his time off, when he should be sleeping, coach other kids um, and build them up as well so that we have this positive way of identifying with police officers. Being both a police officer and a club volleyball coach is not easy, but it is important to McKinster to show the players and the parents that police officers are human beings too. I've never actually known a cop personally since Coach Matt, so it's made me see them, but as actual like people, they make jokes and they have fun just like anyone else. After the death of George Floyd, many Americans started to see police officers in a different light. Police officers that help their communities and coach youth sports could help break some of those barriers that have been made. Well, we're going to do our job either way, but it is nice to see. McKinster said he has experienced nothing but support in his role as a police officer from the club and the team. They are grateful for all McKinster has done. There's so much negativity in the media right now about police officers and that they're the enemy and to be scared of them. Um, and I think connecting with them at a young age and showing them that they're, they're normal people too. McKinster hopes that coaching volleyball will help more people see police officers through a different lens. In Scottsdale, Aaron Slindy, Cronkite News. U.S. champion runner Shelby Houlihan was just banned for four years for testing positive for an anabolic steroid. The former ASU track star disputed the positive test results from last December. She blamed it on eating a pork burrito hours before taking the test. The Athletics Integrity Unit didn't buy her claims and just announced the four-year ban days before the start of the U.S. Olympic track and field trials in Eugene, Oregon. Houlihan is the American record holder in the 1,500 and 5,000 meters. She plans to continue attempts to overturn the ban, a ban that could also disqualify Houlihan from the 2024 Paris Olympics. In other news, the Diamondbacks released their 2021 Nike City Connect uniforms this week. The uniforms are meant to pay tribute to the local Hispanic culture here in the Valley. The D-backs are set to debut these uniforms on June 18th in a home game against the Dodgers. And that's it for the Cronkite Sports Report. Back to you, Sinead and Peyton. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.